Hello, precious people of God. This is uh, Pastor and Dr. Uh, Keith Conkle. Um, welcome to my End Times uh, Bible Study Prophecy Series. I want to encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already, so you can learn about Bible prophecy. And also, uh, so you can help win souls to the Lord, uh, the more that we can reach out and tell people that uh, this world doesn't go on forever and their life doesn't go on forever and they need to give their life to Jesus Christ, the better. And uh, we don't do end times Bible prophecy to, prophecy to scare people, but we do it to prepare people. There's a big difference. Um, so welcome, and uh, if you're in the area this Sunday, we're going to be having a uh, end times Bible prophecy seminar. Uh, starting at 1.30 uh, this Sunday, and then again on October 4th, we're going to be having a uh, prophecy seminar um, starting at 1.30. So uh, the prophecy conference is this Sunday, um, and then the prophecy uh, seminar is October the 4th. We'd love to have you out. I wanted to uh, touch base with you about the peace agreements and all that, and of course we know... Uh, Donald Trump is, uh, and Jared Kushner, and, and before that, Jason Greenblatt, who was uh, President uh, Trump's attorney, were the lead negotiators on this. And um, I do believe that this Abraham Accord is going to be the final peace agreement. It may be adjusted and tweaked. It's going to bring on the um, Palestinians. And then also there needs to be the Antichrist involved. Now, could the Antichrist be involved in all these peace treaties and agreements right now? Yes. Okay, we don't know who he is, but he could be behind the scenes, giving input, doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, he may be even the ones that, that he might be the person that brings the Palestinians to the table, you know, uh, which I believe is what's being done by having all these other peace agreements is you're pushing, putting intense pressure on the Palestinians to come to the table and to um, realize, oh boy, not everybody else has a problem with Israel. The fact is we better make peace with them too, or we're not going to be a state at all. Because, uh, let's just face it, um, at some point, uh, people, especially the Arabs, uh, are even actually going to get tired of the Palestinians whining all the time about not getting what they want. Uh, so I think what's happening is they're being backed in the corner, and uh, somebody is going to bring this all to a head. Now, so, someone asked me the other day, is, is Donald Trump the Antichrist? The answer is no. Um, is Jared Kushner? No. Um, none of those guys are the Antichrist. Barack Obama is not the Antichrist. Okay, it is. Uh, I don't have time to go into it in this particular uh, episode, but uh, the Antichrist, my understanding, is going to come from the revived Holy Roman Empire. In other words, it's going to probably be over in uh, Europe and the other side of the world is where he's going to come from. Uh, uh, people top on the list uh, would be uh, uh, possibly Vladimir Putin. Uh, I'm not saying that it's him. It could be um, uh, Emmanuel Macron. I'm not saying it's him. Uh, it is weird that his name is Emmanuel, which means God with us, and his last name is Macron, and that can be uh, uh, translated to Mark, so that's kind of awkward. God with us, Mark. Uh, you know, uh, kind of reminds you of the mark of the beast. Um, the Antichrist will say, I'm God. But I do not know, nor does anybody else know, who the Antichrist is going to be. However, um, that all being said, this peace agreement is ushering in the final seven years, the seven years of Jacob's trouble. The Bible describes in Daniel chapter 9, 24 through 27 in your Bible. Um this is not a seven-year tribulation. Over and over, people say seven years of tribulation. It's not. Great tribulation is three and a half years. The time of Jacob's trouble is seven years. Everything's going to be all hunky-dory uh, as far as, um, you know, the great tribulation goes until about three and a half years in when the Antichrist is going to turn. But then you talk about, you look into the scripture, and that's where God's going to uh, turn pour out the vials and uh, uh, the different things that is talked about in the book of Revelation, which we'll go into in another episode. But I just want to remind you that the last three and a half years is when all uh, heck breaks loose, if you will, and that's when um, 
the Antichrist has turned on Israel and then it's going to all lead to the Battle of Armageddon where most of the entire world is going to turn on Israel and they would lose. Uh, half of the city is going to be taken of Jerusalem and, and the, the nation of Israel is going to be all, all, almost taken. And that's when Jesus Christ himself with his saints is going to come back and rescue Israel from the nations of the world that are, have turned on it. And uh, then he's going to rule and reign for a thousand years. So that's what's going to happen. So uh, peace is good, but let's just face it. There is going to be no peace until Jesus comes back. But then when he comes back, there's going to be a thousand years of peace at least. Um, and even better, the Bible says that during that time, Satan is going to be put in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. Then he's going to be released again for a short time to deceive some people uh, that are on the earth. You can all find this in your Bible. I'm not dreaming this up, okay? Uh, didn't eat too many fruity pebbles today or eat too much pepperoni pizza last night. Uh, it's all in your Bible, all right? You can check it out for yourself. Uh, what we have to do is we have to be careful that we don't damn and condemn everything we don't understand. Uh, if you haven't studied it out, you haven't researched it out, um, don't make uh, remarks that are inappropriate, okay? Make sure you study things out, look it out, and then if you disagree, make a nice respectful comment um, or something uh, on YouTube or wherever. Um, we just want to make sure that everybody is... Uh, looking at this through the eyes of the Holy Spirit, not through the eyes of the flesh. Fact is, the things that I'm telling you couldn't be revealed by the flesh. They had to be revealed by the Holy Spirit, so much so that Daniel, in order to write these prophecies, fasted and prayed for 21 days, and the prince of Persia, a demonic force, a demonic prince, in, and the angelic world literally fought the delivery of these prophecies that I'm telling you about because uh, they did not want the saints of God and the church to know what was going on in the last days because they don't want you to be prepared. They didn't want you to be prepared. They didn't want you to give your heart and life to Jesus Christ. They didn't want you to change. All right? If they could have prevented that, they felt like, hey, these people aren't going to know. Uh, the, well, these messages, whatever they are, they must be important. So let's keep them from getting to the people. But we know the angels of God prevailed. Daniel got the message and he put it in uh, uh writing and so on so that we could understand them and thank God that he did and here we are telling about it so well you can't know the end times actually you can know the end times there's prophecy after prophecy after prophecy after prophecy in the Bible the whole thing with Daniel coming down angels fought okay the prince of Persia so that you could know the end times all right uh Let's ask those angels how they feel about that. They'd say, uh, you guys don't, you should look into it, study it out, search it out, because we had a big war just to get it down to you. So please appreciate that. So I just want to say, also I want to say it's very likely, I'm not going to predict 100%, but in my opinion, not everybody's going to like what I'm about to say here. I just say, just tell you that uh, this is not a, a political ad for the Republican Party or the Democrat Party or any party, Okay. I think it's very likely Donald Trump is going to be reelected president. Um, one of the reasons I um, say that is I do believe uh, in the helmet North put, I believe it is called model, uh, where he looks at the enthusiasm of the primaries of the candidates and then um, in the, uh, the enthusiasm of their voters, in the, especially at the beginning states of a campaign. And then um, based on that, chooses who would be the who will win the presidential election and I guess it's been right for like a hundred years or something I, I don't know the exact thing it's been right like 24 or, uh, out of 26 elections I personally tend to believe that there's a lot more enthusiasm uh, on the Republican side that isn't to undermine the Democrats in any way shape or form again I'm not taking a political side here in any way shape or form but I do believe, based on that and uh, based on the peace agreements that's going on and the fact that they're not finished and yet they need to be finished and the Trump administration has been behind it, I believe that he will be reelected in order to finish this peace process up. Um, could it happen under another administration? Possibly, but, but it probably wouldn't. It certainly wouldn't happen at this clip, at this fast pace. So I believe because of Bible prophecy, uh, my understanding of it, because of you know past predictions, because of uh, enthusiasm level, um, and now, um, because uh, as many of you heard, 
uh, Supreme Court Justice Ruth, Ruth Bader Ginsburg has passed away um, that shifts the balance of the court. And when I say balance of the court, I'm talking about conservative versus liberal. Um, you know, you, you don't uh, have to uh, be an expert on politics to know that the more conservatives you have on the court, the more likely you get a conservative decision. The more liberal uh, judges you have on the court, the more likely you're going to get a liberal decision. It doesn't mean they're being dishonest. It just means they're finding it the way that they see it, uh, even through the law. So that's why many times presidents want to put the, their candidates up on the Supreme Court or in office because they're thinking they might more likely get a favorable uh court ruling in uh, according to their political ideology. Uh, so I just wanted to say um, the reason why I think that that will prompt uh, President Trump to be reelected is now um, he, uh, if this does go to court, let's say there's mail-in ballot problems and so on and so forth, let's say he does go to court, uh, to the Supreme Court, this election is challenged. Sorry about that. I've got a little, uh, this thing right here, uh, this is, uh, my children's cat is jumping all over, uh, um, my, uh, video here, so sorry about that, she knocked it down, little rat, uh, anyways, um, uh, basically, if there's a, a, a legal battle over the results of the election, all right, um, then, it is very likely that the court will fi find in favor of uh, the conservative side now. Now, you know, there's no guarantee of that. You know, they got to do what's right, obviously, legally. But uh, if I was running for office and I was a conservative candidate, I would want um, the judges to be conservative. Uh, or if I was a liberal presidential candidate and the, they were going to decide the election, I would want them to be liberal. Uh, just because, you know, it, it seems like it would increase their chances. So based on all of those factors, I do believe Donald Trump is going to be reelected president. Um, if I'm wrong, I apologize. I'm not a political analyst. Um, I can't say thus saith the Lord, but I would be shocked if uh, he doesn't win and he doesn't win by a lot. And if it goes to court, it'll be tied up in some federal courts for a little bit. Then it'll jump to higher courts and then it'll end up at the Supreme Court and he will win there. Uh, in my opinion, almost regardless of what the issue is. And this is just severely something wrong. But uh, I love you. God loves you. Be ready. Give your heart and life to Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins. Get in church. Get baptized. Receive the Holy Spirit. Um, read your Bible. Pray. Um, and be ready. We're running out of time. God bless you. I love you. And please forgive me for that video bombed by my children's uh, cat. Her name is Sinny, of all things. The reason why they name her Sinny uh, isn't because she sins a lot. Uh, it's because she has like swirls on her stomach that I guess look like a cinnamon bun. So they thought they'd get creative and name, name her Sinny. All right? <laughs> God bless you.